So here we go. So hi everyone. My name is Nadia. I am a librarian at the Woodbridge Public Library with the Adult Programming Department. Thank you for attending tonight's presentation. Remember the ladies. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to direct them to me in the chat. I'm listed as WPL librarian. Uh, before we begin, I'm just going to give you a little more information. So all of your mics are muted, but if you have a question that you want to say for Grissel, feel free to take yourself off of mute and say your question and then remute yourself. Um, your, their, your cameras can be on or off. It's really up to you. Um, if you have any other questions that you prefer to type, just send them to the chat and I'm going to read them off for her at the end for like a little Q&A. Um, and if you enjoyed tonight's presentation, please remember to check out our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter for other upcoming events. You can also check our woodbridgelibrary.org website that also has all of our upcoming events as well. And now our speaker tonight is Grisel Casasola uh, from the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts located in Madison, New Jersey. Please join me in welcoming Grisel. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> um, so yeah, like um, me as um, Nadia here said, um, I come from the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts and my name is Grisel, yeah, Grisel Casasola. I know it's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit difficult to say, but it's, um, it's actually only uh, two syllables, Greek, so very, very easy, very easy. <laughs> so yeah, so like um, Nadia said, um, I come from the Chandler Museum in Madison and it's a beautiful, gorgeous museum. I don't know if you have any one of you has been there. Um, very pretty, very uh, historical, beautiful building that we have in Madison, New Jersey. And it's one of the, the things that I love about my job. When I first uh, came here to New Jersey, I um, didn't know much, of course, about history or, or buildings in, or, around here because I'm not from here. So when I went to Madison, um, this was one of the buildings that I fell in love. And I didn't know at the time that I was going to work in there. So this was the um, actual, um, when, when the museum used to be a library because it was built to be a library. So this is one of the pictures um, from the reading room. Beautiful. And then we have how it looks today. So yeah, we, we are a museum now before um, we are, uh, before that we were always a library and the building was built in 1899. It's a beautiful, beautiful inside. Hopefully if you, if not been there, hopefully you can come whenever it's safe for you to come. And we are going to talk today about the ladies, the first ladies of the United States of America, right? So we know a lot about the presidents and some of you might know a little bit about the first ladies, but we have some interesting um, details and, and and just facts in here that Miss Hillary, she did an amazing job creating this program. I do not take any credit for the uh, development of, of this program. So um, you will hope that you will enjoy it because it's, it's really one of my, my, my favorites and I think it's one of her favorites too. So the roles for, for the first lady, it has two roles, wife of the president and it was the White House hostess, not always filled by the same person. So before we're going to see that things are changing and in here on this program, you're going to see a lot of first, a lot of first. Um, many things that were good, some of others were considered probably not so good, but we're talking about history here. We're not here to judge. We are going to tell the, the real things that happened um, way, 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 way back. Now, tension between public roles of the first lady and private role, it was always expected to be like, um, at the beginning, um, they didn't have the, the public role, especially the political um, role that some of them have now. And so at the beginning, it was something that I was just not, not happening. It was not a common thing to see. Uh, it, it is a reflection of how the, uh, the attitudes and everything changed for women. Some of these first lady actually took the opportunity um, of being the first lady to create something, to create something good, to create something that we still have to these days because it was 
so many good ideas. So yeah, it's really good to see. The opportunity to have more public and more, influ uh, more influential side, the many uh, of other women, okay, especially here in the United States or in any place here in America. And many, many, like I said, supported uh, or, or helped any causes that women were having or the poor women were actually not, nobody was taking care of that. So you will see in here just a little bit, a glimpse to the past of those different causes. So the first that we have in here, of course, Marcia Dandridge Curtis Washington. So she was the first lady for George Washington. She followed with George during the American Revolution and aid soldiers. So she was um, actually helping the soldiers, gaining her strong support from the soldiers. So she was active. And it's amazing because we see that it was really right in the early years of the United States. So it was, she was really active. She had a, a heart that she, she wanted to help. I think I am more like a state prisoner than anything else. So in that sense, she thought that she, had, she needed to be doing something um, and not just being like a, a beautiful and pretty first lady, that's it. No, she was actually doing something. And in here, you will see a very good example of the things that she remained in favor of slavery. So uh, for us, you know that that is not good for now. So I mean, slavery is not good. But at that time, there was something that it was very, very, they were really, really um, uh, like uh, uh, rooted for that. So um, she remained until she, to the day she died in favor of slavery. So it's, it's a contrast that we see that we have, that we, that we see now for the first ladies. Now, we, we even had a first lady um, um, that in, in the beginning we, we see here and we have some of, some of the other ones, the ladies. So it's just amazing that how in a in hundred years, some things never change and some do. So it's really interesting. She was the first historical woman to be put on a poster's stamp, all right? First, we have the first first here. Then we have Abigail Smith Adams, the first lady for John Adams. She didn't have a formal education, but she read a lot extensively. She was opposed to slavery. So you see, probably from different, very di different points of view. Her letters, including personal, personals, were often intercepted and published in the press. So the press was actually interested in her. She was the first lady to live in the White House. Her grandson published uh, some of her letters in 1848. Um, she was the first published book pertaining to a first lady. So you see, not only the first lady, we're gonna see a lot of firsts in here, which is what I like and I love about the program because we see so many things that we, did. <laughs> we have no idea that these things happen. So it's really amazing that we, that we even had the chance to actually go through some of this. Then we have First Lady Martha Wells Skelton Jefferson. She was the wife of Thomas Jefferson, but she died before he took office uh, when he became the president. So she ran Monticello, inherited her father's plantation and many slaves when he died. She was the first of five women to marry the men who became president after their deaths. Okay. She has a 1965 portrait based on descriptions, okay, because it was really in the um, 18, 1748 and she died in 1782. So that was a long time ago. So this is a portrait based on description and this is a silhouette thought to be the image of her. It is amazing that we even have at least that we have this, this, this picture, this painting because you know, that was a really long time ago. Then we have Martha Patsy Jefferson Randall, the daughter of Thomas Jefferson. She uh, incorrectly identified as hostess. She went uh, with him to the first diplomatic mission to France, Ram Monticello, but opposed to slavery. Dolly Madison serves as the Jefferson escort and hostess, okay? Again, we have a painting of her. Now, Dolly Payne taught Madison she was the first lady for James Madison. She met James, through uh, Aaron Bohr and Lodger at her family home. 
She famously refused to leave the White House during burn, burning of DC in the War of 1812 until Washington's portrait removed. And you can see in here, in the down to your, to your right, that is a, a paint of her when she was younger. And you can see in here, then probably a picture when she was, uh, a photo when she was really, um, when she was really old. The legend said that Zachary Taylor car called her first lady in eulogy, but not, not rec there is not a record of this. She was the earliest first lady to be photographed, you see, when she was older. And she was the first private citizen to send a telegraph, you see? First, 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 that's what I love about, about this program. Elizabeth Cartwright Monroe, the first lady for, for James Monroe, okay? Um, she lived in Paris when Monroe was in United States, uh, a United States minister uh, to France. She limited public roles as first lady due to poor health and reserved nature. So some of the some of these, they were really, really shy, really um, reserved. So some of them, they didn't have any public, um, um, probably more than just a hostess in the White House, but they didn't engage with the press or, or anything because they just, it was in their na nature. It wasn't something they were interested in. She was the daughter, Elisa, Elisa Monroe, Hey, often served as hosters. So it was the, do the daughter who was actually um, doing um, the service of the hostess. Um, the daughter Maria Monroe was the first presidential child we married in the White House. Okay. Louisa Catherine Jones Adam. She was the first lady for uh, John Quincy Adams. She was very well educated in France and England. She thought to think beyond limited place of woman at the time. So she was like an innovator. She wanted, she was way ahead, ahead of her time. And of course, if she lived in France, um, um, for sure, we don't really know for sure, but we can assume that she at least uh, um, spoke French, so English and French. And she became a very passionate defendant of women's rights and defended herself and her family in print. Okay, so. We see we are here in 2021, and it's amazing that even at this moment, there are some countries, and even here, we're still fighting for women's rights. When in 1775, 1852, you know, all, during her years, during um, her life, she was actually advocating and fighting for women's rights. She became strongly anti-slavery. So, became so at the beginning she was well, um, uh, pro-slavery, but then she changed. So we just which I just cannot stop thinking and imagining what happened to them to when they really realized that it was not a good thing to do and what struck to, to be to change, you know, to, to stop um, believing in, in slavery and being advocated to, to, to stop the slavery. She was the first lady born um, outside of the United States and she opened the house, the, the White House for the first public tours, okay? So she, this is really interesting because it, when, you, when we see here, she was the first lady from 1825 to 1829. Before that, there was just not a public tour. So anyone who went to the White House, it was because either they were there, it was something related, everything to work for nobody except people, people who needed there, or should be there, were there. But this was the first lady that actually opened the house to the public. And please, if you have any comment, if you want to say something, if you want to add something as I go, feel free to do it. Um, I will be um, very glad to, to hear, to listen to you. And at the end, we can chat a little bit. It's not yet said that we can have a, little, a few minutes to, to, to open questions. And if I don't know the answer, don't worry. <laughs> I don't know everything, but we can still share about it. Probably if someone of you asks something, then if I don't know, the other one knows because, you know, um, I would love to know all their answers, but I don't. <laughs> so we go with Rachel Donaldson Jackson. Uh, she was the wife of Andrew Jackson. She died before he took office in 1829. She was the first time that a personal event was issued against a presidential candidate. So this is something really, 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 
uh, um, that a good thing. So Jackson blamed Adams and his supporters for her death. So Adams um, actually uh, took, took it against um, Rachel during the campaign. Um, and this is something that it, 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 it's really, it made me wonder because today we see that it doesn't matter who the candidate is. It doesn't matter um, what, what political party it is. During the campaign, one goes against each other. One goes, and that's that's usually the way it goes. That usually one attacks the other, the other one attacks the family. The one that, it's not a good thing, but sadly, it's the reality that we see. But it, with and we think that it might be something new, but now, in the 1800s, it, it was happening, and definitely Adams attacked her, not him. So not on um, actual Andrew Jackson. So it's really really sad. Rachel had a political impact after her death. She was the first of the three ladies who were divorced prior to marrying the president. So that was what Adams took actually against her. Um, the problem that she had um, with her first, first husband, we can go, <laughs> we can be here all day long, but yeah, definitely it was something that it, it, it didn't end up well. And also it was something that made her, apparently, of course, made her suffer a lot. And we go with Emily Donaldson, holsters for Andrew Jackson. She was the daughter of Rachel Jackson's brother. Some indication that Rachel intended to leave many first lady duties to Emily anyway. Term ended with her death from tuberculosis. The first time the president of reality formally given the status of White House holsters. Okay, because of course, um, Andrew Jackson's wife, she died. So, um, a, Emily Donaldson had to become the, uh, the White House host. Then Sarah George Jackson hosts again for Andrew Jackson. Jackson's daughter-in-law married to Andrew Jackson Jr. She served as a co-host with Emily, uh, unique in White House history. It never happened before and I don't think it, would, it happened after this. So it's just, it's just a sad story because of Andrew Jackson's wife when, when she died, of course. Then we have Anna Van Buren. She was the wife of Martin Van Buren. Died before he took office <clears throat> again in 1837. Grew up in a rural community of, in New York. Legends suggest that she and Van Buren were childhood sweethearts, that they knew each other from forever. She died while he was serving in the New, New, uh, New York State Senate. So, okay, so before he took office, she, sadly she died. Then we have Angelica Singleton uh, Van Buren, hosters for uh, President Martin Van Buren. She married Martin Van Buren's oldest son, Abraham uh, Van Buren. And she brought up in she was brought up in an aristocracy, um, South Carolina family. She tried to create an atmosphere in the White House similar to the European courts. So we can see here, even in her dress and everything. So we can see that uh, she was pretty much attached to any any custom, any tradition, and the, the, the way that she was still to the European. And this fueled attacks that Van Buren was a monarch. monarch. So it was attached, they were, that they were attached to the monarchy. So again, this is another, another structure in here that we see that many of them were actually still like attached to, to to England, to the crown, what, what, however you want to say, you want to explain it, but some of them, they, they really were. And that, of course, created problems, created more attacking from one side to the other. Anna Todd Hills, um, seems out Harrison, she was the wife of, of President William Henry Harrison. Her, her education instilled belief in rights for a woman and helping those less fortunate. So we see a little bit of everything here. She was sadly too ill to attend inauguration. Um, she was preparing to leave for Washington DC when her that Harrison had died. So um, never served uh, because he died. First presidential widow given a pension by Congress, $25,000 and three outgoing posters. She was the first lady to have a formal education and the first lady widowed while holding um, the, the um, um, you know, the title. So it was really interesting because in this one, 
um, even though she had an education, so probably she had for in in that in those years, 200, 200 years ago, 250 years ago, to have an education means that you really were able to have the money to pay for that education. So it wasn't something that is like today that we have public schools. So um, if she had an education, it was because either she had her money or her family had money, but still she was the first presidential woman widow <laughs> to give a pension in $2,500 is a lot of money. If we can compare that to now, it's really a lot of money in the 1800s for sure. Jane in Irwin Harrison, hostess for William Henry Harrison, widow of William Henry Harrison's son, William Henry Harrison Jr., served as White House hostess for the four weeks of Harrison administration, only four weeks. Leticia Christian Tyler, first lady from John Tyler. Tyler was vice president for William Henry Harrison and became president upon his death. Uh, she limited the role as first lady of the as first lady very limited due to poor health, and she died of a stroke. Much attention paid to her death and funeral. First president to, wife to die while being the first lady wife. She was already the first lady. So again, very sad. Um, the, the president um, Harrison the, just died, and then the new first lady of wife of. Um, John Tyler, she died also. So yeah, this is a tragedy after a tragedy. Then we have Priscilla Cooper Tyler. She was the hostess for John Tyler, married Robert Tyler and John Tyler's son, accompanied Tyler on presidential tour in, in this, during the summer of 1843. And she and Robert declared loyalty to the South when civil war broke out. Before Nancy Reagan, only professional actress to serve as, as White House hostess. So she um, was an actress before, um, before Nancy Reagan, she was only the only one that was an actress. First official hostess to give birth during um, um, her presidential um, being the first lady and her husband being the president. We have Leticia Letty, Tyler Sample. She was hosted for John Tyler. Um, um, John Tyler's daughter took over as a host when Priscilla left. Letty shock and hurt when she lost the position to her father's new wife. <laughs> so in here we see a little bit of a little bit of drama, if you can say, because um, her fathers are remarried. So we're gonna see a new first lady in here. Here, see, Julia Gardner Tyler, she was the first lady for John Tyler. So, um, she, John Tyler was the first president to be married in office. Yes, very deliberate with her um, public appearance and defending labor. Again, we see some of them against, we see some of them um, that were supporters of the of slavery. She was the first lady to known to actively see, seek newspaper coverage of her social event. So if we can compare to now, she will be, because we, we see here um, that she wanted the press to be actually in her social events. So she will be in 2021, like looking any any <laughs> any type of, of, of um, attack attention from Facebook or from Twitter or from Instagram, if we can compare now because she definitely was very interested in all the attention. She was the first to be a celebrity, you see, and she featured in one of first political cartoons linking a first lady to legislation. So it's interesting how we see that some of them, they didn't want to know absolutely anything, just being hostess in the White House, but some of them, they will go actually out and they were really interested, especially in, on the, in all the attention. And some of them took even more attention than their husbands, the, the actual presidents. Sarah Childress Polk, she was first lady for James Knox Polk, and she were mo was more ambitious than her previous first lady. Lack of children meant she could focus on his political career, okay? She, she, she didn't have to take for um, any children because she, she didn't have, she was sober, toned, in the White House, officially neutral during the Civil War, but supported the South. 
So neutral, but she supported the south. It says in here, if I get into the White House, I will neither keep house nor make butter. So she wasn't interested in to be a housewife at all. And and I, I found that, that it's really um it's really interesting the way that um she said it because what did you expect from a French lady in 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 those years in the 1800s? What did you expect? Do you expect them to be like a regular normal person? taking care of the house, taking care of, the, of uh, ev everyone in the house, or what do you expect? Do you expect them to be like, like they are today, having so many so many roles and everything? So it just makes you wonder, the, especially the way she said it in here. And we have Margaret Peggy McCall Smith Taylor. She was the first lady for Zachary Taylor. Spent almost 50, 40 years, I'm sorry, traveling with Taylor around the frontier on army assignments, even during wartime. Didn't want him to become a president. Daughter Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth Betty Taylor Bliss Dendrich served as hostess and dealt with the public on her family's behalf. Remained loyally, loyal to the Confederacy. So it's interesting because she didn't want to do absolutely nothing. So that's why we have to two different pictures here because the daughter did all the work of the public relations and everything. And she didn't even want her husband to become the president. So we, we see here that she just didn't want nothing to do with. She was very interested in the, in the war and doing so many things during the war, but definitely not, not as a first lady. Abigail Powers Fillmore, first lady for Miller Fillmore. She was his published school, school teacher from 1814 to 1826. Fillmore was one of her students. So her husband was one of her students. As a first lady, she was seen as a public figure, figure and was frequently in the press. So if she was a teacher, she had a lot of confidence to be talking and everything. She, she didn't mind actually be talking to the press or anything. She was the she has a lot of firsts. First lady to come from a lower in, uh, income class, you know, family. First to work for pay before she, were, she was married because I don't know if you, anyone here knows about this, but if you were a teacher during those years, um, you were only allowed to be a teacher um, before you get married. So let's say you were a teacher, I don't know, from 17 or 18 years, and you get married at 22 or 23, then you have to stop being a teacher because when you, when you were a wife, um, a newly wife back then, you were not allowed to work outside your house. So you will have to work. Um, you can be a teacher to your kids in your house, but you cannot be a teacher for, for other children. So she was the first one to work for pay before married. The first to have a salary from independent employment as a married woman. And then when this happened, when she actually um, became, become a Mary and everything, so she, she was the first to have a salary from independent employment. So someone else like we do, and we have today, like I'm doing right now, I'm working. And I don't know if some of you work in, in during the day too. Miss Naya, everyone, we work, someone pay us, right? So she was the first to actually be that. So that, that's what I love about her, her story because she was definitely the first for, for so many things. We have now Jane Means Appleton Pierce, first lady for Franklin Pierce, very shy and reclusive, did not enjoy her husband's political career or mingling in society. So again, we have this. They, she didn't care at all. At all for what her husband was doing. She added a furnace and a bathroom with hot and cold running water to the White House. So at least, at least that was a good thing <laughs> because that, uh, they didn't have a running water before her time in the White House. <laughs> she, she, Jane's uncle, widow Abigail um, Kent Mins performed hostess duties from 1853 and 1855. So she really didn't want to do um, she, would, she, she just wanted to be a wife and do the, 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 the work of a housewife. She didn't want to mingle at all with society. And we have Hi, Harry and Rebecca Lane Johnson, first lady for President James Buchanan, under the care of her mother's 
brothers, James Buchanan, from age nine. In her will, she left her art collection to Corcoran unless the Smithsonian established a national gallery of art. First lady, use of the term the first lady. So before we see that they, they tended to be, to be called hostess because when they were in the White House and they were actually the first lady, but before it was named like that, they would only do things in the White House. They will, they will be take, practically take care of the White House. But we know now that the first ladies now do more than that. So that's why when you have the role to be the first lady, your work is not only in the White House, actually you, you, your work is outside the White House. She, she was the first to have a visual image widely, widely disseminated around US and the world. She was definitely the first one that the world took an eye of on her, for sure. Mary Todd Lincoln, first president for Abraham Lincoln. She came from a very wealthy Southern family, very interested in polit politics and a strong abolitionist. So it's really good in here because we see she was a strong abolitionist just like her husband, right? So that it, it, they, <laughs> they became together. So that was a good thing, especially. Um, for the history of the United States, but in see we, in here we see that she was completely different from her from two first ladies before. But she was interested in her husband's career, in the politics, in interested in everything that has to do with with the presidency. She credit she is credited with helping Lincoln see human, not just political sides of abolition. Okay, so this is this is one of the the realities. So um, um, slavery was only good for the people who actually that were um, the own the slaves and it was all about money and everything. No one before them actually saw or thought about slavery, about the human side, about the fact that they were doing horrible things with actual humans, okay? So they were the first. So this set, this set a precedent, so this is really good because when you have a leader, just like them, that they, then everything can change. So she was actually the first lady to welcome African-Americans into the White House. We started this program during the 17, the end of the 1700s, and now we see that it's the, right in the middle of the um, 1800s, that's when Abraham Lincoln was president. So she was on the first one to, to welcome African-Americans into the White House. That is one of my favorites um, first. But it's so sad that it took so long and it's so sad that, you know, <laughs> it wasn't something that it was possible before. First presidential wife to be called first lady in the press. So everything was a first for this lady. Everything, anything that they did was a first, okay? And it's very, 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 uh, it's awesome that we know these facts for sure. Lisa McCarla Johnson, um, first lady for Andrew Johnson. Among first ladies born into poverty, okay, she was one of the first. Johnson's education, education was really limited and she helped improve his writing and spoke communication. Okay, so it's, it's really interesting that she helped him, okay? And I like this, I like it about, because um, I don't think we don't, we don't have um, in here right now all of the records if they were if there was like many, many teachers that they were male, but for sure, most of the, the teachers in normal, younger education, not in college, in younger education, um, the teachers were, were women. So it's really interesting that she actually helped him. She was the wife of the only Senator from the South to remain loyal to the union when his state seceded. It's so, so interesting, so many facts. And we have Martha John Patterson, hosted for Andrew Johnson. Johnson's daughter served as the primary hostess and greeter for the public. So she welcomed the public. She helped start efforts to collect portraits of former White House residents. Mary Johnson Strawberry Brown helped her sister but disliked any public roles. Cared for Johnson's five grandchildren and integrated them into his life when he won. Yeah. I'm not gonna say much about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Julia Dent Grant, first lady for Ulysses um, S. Grant. We are very close to, to enter the um, 20th century here. Grant disliked the credit he got for ending the war, but Julia loved the attention. In 1886, a hundred years before I was born, <laughs> pre-sales and sales of Grant's memoirs one year after his death led her to getting the largest single royalty, royalty, royalty check in history of $200,000. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So uh, I guess we can see why she loved the attention. <laughs> she was the first lady to issue a press release. First, 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 first. First to give press regular access to her and the White House. Access to her children led to the idea of first family. So we see here from 1869 to 1877, uh, it was the first um, idea and the first concept of the first family because this is the time when they, they were actually um, exposing their children basically to precedents very different to what we do now that we know the whole family. We even know the 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 uncle and the, and the nephews and everyone. We know the families uh, of the president, whoever the president is, we know, um, at least we know the entire family, um, the, you know, <laughs> the, the, the first, first um, family, but also some of the, the relatives too. So it's very, very different from what it, what it was before, before them, before um, President Ulysses Grant presidency. Lucy Ware, um, Webb Hayes, so she was the first lady for Rutherford B. Hayes, strong abolitionist and believed men and women to be intellectually equal. She's one of my favorites. Nicknamed Lemonade Lucy, but Rutherford actually decided to ban um, alcohol. Accompany uh, Hayes on national tours. She was the first lady to go to college, Wesleyan Female College, first docu documented cases First Lady having independent public appearance on a uh, Philadelphia visit in 1878. So again, a lot of first. Um, and for sure, the fact that she was just thrown up um, abolitionist and believed that men and women were totally in, in intellectually equally. Oh boy, that that should have that must have created a lot of problems. She probably was not loved <laughs> by many people. Because of course, at that time, and, and even in this time, no, no, a lot of people, many people don't think that men and, and women are equally um, intellectual um, and should be working as in the same in the same fields and everything. So yeah, so, very interesting for sure. Lucretia Rudol Garfield. So first lady for James Abraham Garfield. She taught French, algebra and Latin. So we assume we can assume that she was, um, of course, very well. Um, that she spoke French and she spoke on Latin and English, of course. Uh, James Garfield was her former Greek teacher. That's just, just, it's really interesting. Despite pressure and the total ban on alcohol in the White House, insisted on paying Garfield's female physician as much as male ones. First of all, let's talk about female physician. So we can see now, even at the end of the 1800s, the beginning of the, of the um, 20th century, that we do have a female physician. It's not easy, it's super difficult. Um, some of them, they were only allowed to, to study um, on all female colleges, then they were able to study in other, in other places. So it's awesome that he had a, um, a female physician, but, she insisted on paying her as much as the male one. So we see we still have the same, the same struggle even to this day. It's, it's just amazing. First presidential candidate wife to appear on a campaign poster. Okay. So again, a lot of firsts, and I I love, I love all these first. Ellen Lewis. And were, um, Herndon Arthur, wife of Chester Arthur, died before he took office in 1881. So her wealth allowed Arthur to move in circles. His salary as a lawyer will not allow. So apparently, 
um, being a lawyer back then wasn't something that, you know, it wasn't the money maker that most lawyer or many lawyers can do now. I'm not saying all of them because I don't know all, <laughs> all of the lawyers, but yeah, it was something that it wasn't that, that um, um, they're a strong money maker that, like today. So her wealth allowed him to actually do, um, to move around. And Arthur became president when Garfield was killed in 1881. First Lady, um, September from from September 1881 to January 1883. Mary Molly Arthur McElroy, so hosted for Chester um, A. Arthur, did not feel bound by unwritten rules for First Lady as she was not a wife. Had an open house reception in family quarters that were attended by 2,000 plus people. Um, early and strong supporter of civil rights for African American. So you see, some of them before, some of the first lady before, they were actually advocates and 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 stronger about against. Um, you know, they were abolitionists. Some of them were fighting for women rights. But here we have the first one that was actually fighting for African American rights. Okay, fighting for for uh, for the, the important things. They've, for things that we that we never should uh, actually be fighting there, it was supposed to be like the, since that way since the, since the beginning. But yeah, she was the um, an early, early and strong supporter. Early because she was one of the first, of course. Rose Elizabeth Cleveland. All right, so Rose Elizabeth Cleveland, Cleveland's sister, serves as hoster prior to to his marriage. I, she was a writer and editor, had a long-term romantic relationship with Evelyn, Evangeline Simpson, and they ended up in Tuscany and both are buried there. Frances Folsom, Cleveland. So first lady for Gruber Cleveland. Cleveland was executor of friend's father's estate, but not her legal guardian. Two ball reporter wrote that she stopped wearing a bustle and it soon went out of fashion. Grover didn't think women should be involved in or think about politics. She followed this. Youngest president's wife to become first lady, first presidential wife to call on head of state, Queen Regan of Spain. Very interesting information. Then we have Caroline Lavinia Scott Harrison, first lady for Benjamin Harrison. Before her marriage, she taught music, home economics, and music. She had an electricity, <laughs> this is very funny. She had electricity installed at the White House. So before the, the, the before her, there was not electricity. And it's really funny because after that happened, all the presidents, well, not all of them, but some of them, after that happened, they were really, really um, scared and afraid to actually turn on the, any of the, of the electric, um, in anything, they were they were turn on the light or the bulb, whatever thing, because they were actually afraid of getting either electrocuted or afraid of a fire, which is completely completely reasonable and understandable because it was something new. But for sure, it's kind of funny too. <laughs> she wouldn't support for Johns Hoskins School of Medicine unless they accepted women to become doctors. So again, it's one of my favorites right there too. She sadly died of tuberculosis in October, 1892. She gave her first speech by a sitting first lady to, con to first Congress. And it's really interesting because um, she was very brave. So I just wonder what, 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 what is she able to actually accomplish if she were to have a, a more time, if she were able to, to end it her, you know, the period of time when, when, when he was a president. So it's really, really, really cool, but sad that she just died so young. Ida Saxon McKinley, first lady for William McKinley. Her father was a strong abolitionist. She worked uh, in her father's bank, eventually managing the bank when her father was away. Public role during um, 19, 1896 election, spoke and met with leaders. First known incumbent first lady to visit a foreign co country, uh, Mexico. 
and the first incumbent first lady seen on film spoke at Pan American Exposition in Buffalo. Again, I love all, all the first for sure. Then we are officially in the um, 20th century. Edith Kermin Carol Roosevelt, first lady for Theodore Roosevelt. Okay, so we see that she grew up in with Roosevelt children and had a close bond with Theodore from a young age. Name changed from executive manor to White House. So in here, we actually, for her, we know at the beginning of the 20th century, the, the name changed from the executive manor to um, executive manor to White House. And she hated having private, private life in press and had a limited people political role. Home paintings on first lady in White House, so tourists will appreciate the role of a first lady. Now, Alice Haraway leave Roosevelt, and here we see Roosevelt's first wife. Um, we see a, a, right here on the left, in the upper left, that was the first um, Roosevelt, first wife. Helen Louise Nellie Heron Taft, first lady for William, um, Howard Taft. She taught in school, continued teaching after um, her marriage to Taft until she discovered that she was pregnant. Arranged for planting thousands of cherry trees in DC. Very good at public relationship and it showed when a stroke diminished her ability to advise him. She was the first lady to ride with her husband in the inaugural um, parade. First incumbent first lady to attend national convention, so 1912. That is, that is amazing, 1912. So 100 years ago was the first one. It was a lot of time later um, when, they, when she was actually there in the national convention. And now we see that everyone is at the convention whenever the, and both political party here have the, the, the conventions, we see everyone in there. Uh, only to attend that of opposition demo democratic. Ellen Axon Wilson, first lady for Thomas Woodrow Wilson. A stained glass window she designed for Princeton was created by Tiffany Studios. Joined Wilson in a stop tour of Georgia, her home state, first lady known to have such an overtly political appearance in public. So in here, we're gonna see more of that. She was the first lady to pursue own career during her tenure. We still have a lot of firsts in here. Marga Margaret Woodrow Wilson, hoster for Woodrow Wilson. Wilson's daughter took on a public role of hostess and civic leader. During World War I, went to the war zone in France against her father's wishes. She was one of the first women present at signing of the Versailles Treaty. Pretty impressive, right? Pretty impressive. Helen Widow uh, Bones, Wilson's first cousin, took on the role of private confidence uh, and, first, and caretaker from September, from September 1914 to December 1915. Here we see a picture of her. And we have Edith Bollingott Wilson, first lady for Woodrow Wilson, inherited the yearly store of her first husband and ran it. After his stroke, on um, spread the story that it was just exhaustion and refused anyone else direct access to him. Cabinet had to grow through her. Her um, 1938 memoir was found to be highly inaccurate. Yes. Florence Ma Mabel Kling, the Wolf Harding, first lady for Warren Gamalier Holiday. She supported herself and her son by teaching piano after her first husband abandoned them. During the 2019 campaign, she voiced her political opinions more than the earliest um, first ladies and better understood how to manipulate <laughs> the media. Okay, so you need to you need to have your tricks down there um, in order to survive against the, the press and the media and everything. She was the first lady to vote for her husband because we see here, of course. Now this is something that is, triggers me. 
So they were there, they were the first lady, they were the hostess, they were everything, they were supporting their, the, the ones who supported their husband and helped them in any way, but they couldn't vote for them before, of course, 1921, 19, the First Amendment. And um, it's amazing that, yeah, she was the actual first one to be granted the, the right and the privilege to vote for her husband. First to get the Secret Service protection and the first to ride in an airplane. You see? So this is not only remembering the ladies. I think we have to <laughs> change the name of the program because it's the first, first, or first program. I mean, we have the first of first, so many firsts in here, which is why I really love it. Grace Anna Goodfield College, the first lady for Cam Calvin, um, John College, educated at University of Vermont. So we, from here now on, we're gonna see some of them were actually educated in the universities, trained at then taught at Clark School for her um, for this MA from 1902 and 1905. As a trained teacher of the deaf, that's why she was in, in, in there, she brought attention to those with disabilities. So in here we see there's a lot of, a, a new type of force for sure. This doesn't mean that that during the early years of the United States there were not people with disabilities. It just means that no one really cared in the public or in government. No one really. So she was definitely the first one to actually. I just wonder how did they do so many so many young kids and the families. How did they deal with these types? Uh, special needs or, or anything that we do have a, a, a structure we have we do have a, a, a programs for that now but definitely not before she had a strict uh, rule of granting no interviews and making no public remarks or speeches seen as a role model for women pursuing her edu higher education so all she wanted to do was really focus in the education so unlike most pre 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 predecessors, she avidly followed technological advancement like a radio on film. So she was the, the first that I was, you see, because she was really educated and she continued and wanted to do different and new things. So she definitely followed all the new things in technology that was completely new at the moment. Film and radio, there was more and more becoming more popular in those early years of the 20th century. Lou Henry Hoover, the first lady for uh, President Hoover. She and Hoover organized campaign to feed 10 million Belgians and residents of German occupied France. Very comfortable speaking in public and did so across the country. Curtailed her activities once first lady, especially in light of great depression in, great depression, in order to appeal traditional and steady. First woman to earn a degree in ge geology. Pretty cool. Now, from here now, I don't know if you knew any of this one, but from here now, I, I'm pretty sure you know everyone else. So, um, uh, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, first lady for Franklin Roosevelt, she held press conference that broke important news. Only allow females reported. I love it. So, newspaper had to hire female reporters and give them substantive roles. So it's not only like, hey, hey what, what is this and this? No, important roles, important questions. I really love it. <laughs> when she was denying Mary Anderson the use of their um, constant heart, she quit the DAR and asked Anderson to sing at Lincoln Memorial and for the English king and queen. She was the longest serving first lady because of course, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was the longest serving president. President Truman appointed her as, an, as only female representative to UN in 1945. It's pretty amazing, pretty impressive. And we can go on, but about her book, you certainly don't have the time to do it. Elizabeth Virginia Wallace Truman, first lady for Harry S. Truman. She grew up with Harry Truman. When he was a store owner, she was an unsalary manager, not pretty, accountant, etc. When he was a judge, she was his advisor and aide and very active in the White House social life. 
lived longer than any other first ladies, um, 97. Mami Geneva do uh, Eisenhower was first lady for President Eisenhower, served as an enthusiastic and energetic figure on his extensive campaign tour. He saw the role of first, our first lady as just wife of president and hostess, personally responded to all the letters and desegregated the White House Easter egg roll. In the 1952 campaign, she was the first when candidate wives marketed to women voters as a part of the campaign. Because of course, the women were allowed to vote by then and she was the first president's wife known to have been publicly kissed by him. <laughs> but before this, no one saw the president and, and his wife and kissing. So and now we see them everywhere. <laughs> now we see all politicians and president everywhere they do, but definitely it wasn't something common before. And then we have me, Jackie um, Rouvier Kennedy Onassis, first lady for President um, Kennedy, worked as a writer prior to her, to her marriage, including for the Washington Times Herald. Her fashion drew more attention than any previous lady. I think she was a fight, um, fashion um, icon for sure, and did a television special on her White House um, restoration, created new position of official photographer and submitted more, more photographs to the press than ever before. Again, this, this was something that was more available now at this time in the mid um, um, 20th century. So there was something that she really did and enjoyed. Claudia Taylor, Lady Burr Johnson, um, first uh, lady for um, President um, Lyndon Johnson, called Lady Bird since she was a, a child, very supportive of Johnson signing the Civil Rights Act, the only woman present for signing. Started with the White House Children's Garden, uh, highly involved in the administration. For the first time, effort was put into scripting what the first lady said. She started uh, keeping daily diary, starting with the, her thoughts on Kennedy's assassination. So she was very well um, interesting. And we have Thelma Catherine Pat um, Ryan Nixon, so first lady for President Nixon, played an important role as Nixon advisor, very effective goodwill ambassador, made a White House more accessible. So she was in the, this uh, while presidencies in the in the seventies, in the seventies. So more and more accessible. She was the most traveled first lady before Hillary Clinton, had a unique diplomatic status of personal representative of the president. She was, she was very well um, involved in everything that, that he was doing, I'm very supportive of him. Elizabeth Boomer Ford, first lady for President Jeter Fall, um, studied dance and had a dance, um, had a career as a mother dance. Dancer, her openness about breast cancer encouraged many women to be checked. So again, first, and it's very important, even to this day, focus on equal rights for one, and very comfortable giving speeches and picking without preparation. He was the only candidate spouse to give a concession speech as he had laryngitis. <laughs> Pretty cool, that. Now we have um, Eleanor Rosalind Smith Carter, first lady for James, um, for Jimmy Carter, and yes, well, uh, she's the first lady. She's still the first lady. Uh, um, she's alive, 1927, and um, he's alive too. <laughs> like her two Republican predecessors, she supported the Equal Rights um, Amendment, held uh, substantive meetings with political leaders in Central and South America. So in here we see even more involvement, not only in here in the United States but also. In, 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 the rest, in the rest of the world, not only here. And try to change the stigma around mental illness, which is sadly still a, a stigma because not a lot of people like to talk about it. And she was, she, she tried definitely to, to change that. First candidate's wife to make her own campaign promises to ensure the passage of mental health legislation. It's amazing that 200 years later, it took them 200 years later for her first lady to actually promise something. <laughs> then we have Nancy Reagan. We all know her. She worked as an actress, included 11, um, 11 films, movies, 
three after she married, dubbed Queen Nancy seemed out of touch with many Americans facing unemployment. Major program was drug education and prevention. First lady to address a UN General Assembly on drug trafficking. So you see, many of them they were just really um, focusing on different things, but they definitely they had a they had a, a plan, they had a vision. Now Barbara Bush, main initiative was liter literacy campaign. She was focusing. On, on, on books and, and, and reading and everything that has to do with that. Understood the need to cultivate a public images, avoided controversy and very good with press. First candidate's wife to address the convention that elected her husband focused on him as a family man. So we see that, that uh, from, I guess, um, from the moment they were allowed to, to have some type of participation in the, in the conventions and everything. So that either helped them or either done, <laughs> really doesn't help them at all, but definitely something that both um, political parties, they do now. And we know, as we all know, with Hillary Clinton, she went to jail, law school, and worked as a lawyer prior to her marriage. Um, she was a lawyer before that. Her initiative included the healthcare reform, uh, children's health insurance, and women's health and equal equality. She traveled around the world advocating for women's um, rights and, and educational equal rights. First lady to have her own office in the West Wing and only first lady to be elected um, to office herself. And we have Laura Bush, yes, she's still in, in living, had a master's in library science and worked as a teacher and a school librarian, governor's wife, and then first lady. She focused on literacy, early reading, and early child development. Very, very much like her mother-in-law. Uh, Michelle Obama, um, of course, she earned degrees from Princeton and Harvard Law School, focused on healthy families, let's move campaigns, serves members of their family, higher education, and the education of adolescent girls internationally, held day of, of service instead of traditional women's pre-inauguration. First Lady Milaria Trump, uh, for Donald Trump, she was born in Slovenia. She started uh, modeling at age 16, including working for photographers and campaigns. She married Trump in 2005 and as his third wife, and she became a US citizen in 2006, and she launched her own yearly collection in 2010, and she started an anti-bullying campaign as first lady. And she is the second first lady to be born outside of the United States. And we have our current first lady. Uh, she's actually Joe Biden's second wife. She was the second lady during Joe, Joe Biden's um, years of being the um, vice president. She holds an education, um, a doctorate in education. She said a teacher, an educator. And also she is, it's not right here, but she's also the first and the only um, first lady to actually keep her daytime job, if we might see. Cause she's teach a teacher. And while she was um, being the second lady, she never stopped working as a teacher. And right now she's been, she's been the, serving as the first lady and she's still working as a teacher. So that's really very interesting. And we are now, thanks for watching very much. Thank you so much for watching. And now Ms. Nadia, we are ready here for any Q and A, any comments, anything that you want to add? Well, I want to thank you for, you know, giving that thorough presentation. I learned something. I did not know that much about all of our first ladies. So thank you so much for, or thanks to Hillary and thanks to you for giving us all that information. If anybody has a question or a comment, please let me know. Um, one person who did say something in the chat, Trish, she said, Pierce, I think Pierce seems a lot like Melania Trump. So I guess um, I remember that one. That was the one who didn't want to do anything way way earlier in the in the presidencies and she was more interested in just being a wife and whatnot yeah. and i can see that comparison yeah for sure no, especially, especially if they were like 
some of them were not even born here in the United States, so it was really difficult for them. I, I really understand some of the, the previous, I mean, the, the first one, it was hard for, for many of them too, in so many ways. Definitely, definitely. Yes. Trish adds in the chat, mm -hmm. her being shy, not interested in her husband's career, which is, I would say, about right. <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, if anybody has a question, feel free. If not, that's okay, too. It was a lot of information. I feel like it was like history times five tonight. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just Hillary took a lot of time because we know a lot of the, the presidents, but Hillary took a lot of time in this because it's just so much, so much more information about them that we, we don't know. And things that we have today, we have to thank their efforts because they really fought for so many for so many things that we have now, like I said, it's the, the, the programs of the first. You see, and for so many, for, for, for immigration, for everything that you see, it's, it's really, it's a really very beautiful, but very important uh, exactly. program. I like just from you telling me us about the different first ladies, like the role of the first lady has changed dr dramatically over the couple of years. Like when you said the first lady who had her own office, uh, that's like fascinating because I always assume that nah, I guess they all just had offices, but no, that had to be that had to be a first. Oh, and, and if you see, I don't know if you done have you done the 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 health of the chief the, the program for the for the, for the presidents? No, we haven't done that one yet. So if you see when you see that who, who, whoever is here, that that hopefully you you get to do it. You see that even even the presidents in the early years they didn't know many things either so they were actually learning because they were actually you know everything they were um and um letting go of the monarchy letting go of england letting go of all of that mm -hmm. and creating their their own country so it's different it's for sure it's different yeah definitely but thank you again and you know since we don't seem to have any questions right now feel free to like send an email to me if you have anything you want to follow up with they're red the email address is listed right here, education at metc at dot org. And I yeah. plan on, you know, emailing a link to this presentation tomorrow and I'll include the email address if anybody feels like reaching out. All right. Thank you so much to everyone. It was a, a little a quiet program, but I hope everyone enjoyed it. <laughs> Everyone's learning so much. Yes. <laughs> but thank you again to everyone and have a great day.